time now for a look at your health. February is Eating Disorder Awareness Month, and new statistics are showing that more teenage girls and even boys are becoming anorexic and bulimic. So joining us now, as he does every Tuesday, is Dr. Mitchell Goldman from UCSD to talk about this. This is a disease we've been hearing about for a long time. Why is it still a leading cause of death in teenagers? Who knows? Is it because people are looking at Hollywood and looking at movie stars and supermodels that are really airbrushed most of the time and trying to achieve those appearances? We really don't know, but it's not going down. In fact, every year, the percentages go up and up. About 1% of teenage girls have anorexia nervosa. That's where they don't want to eat. And it can be very uh, frightening and very dangerous for them. And, and boys are, are victims of this as well, although in smaller numbers. Right, about four times less than girls, but even we're seeing an increasing number right now of teenage boys that are really trying to look their best by purging, which is called bulimia, which is even percent, uh, present in 2% of young girls, but also just not eating, which is anorexia nervosa. Well, let's break down the three categories of eating disorders, because I didn't even know there were this many. Yeah, well, it's the anorexia nervosa. That's the most dangerous kind. That can have lots of problems with your esophagus, with your heart, fainting. There's bulimia, and that's when you eat, and then you purge or throw up after eating, so don't do it tonight. And then there's also purging, which is just basically you're, you're just try, trying to eat a, as much as you can. And this also leads, I, I think one of the misnomers about this is that it really is a psychological disorder. It, a, it is. And you say trying to get people to admit the problem is one of the biggest hurdles. It really is. I actually have a patient I'm trying to treat right now that has this disorder and even in consultation with both the patient, who's a teenager, alone, and the mother alone, it's very difficult to get everyone on the same table. But the only treatment for this is recognizing that you have a problem and then seeking appropriate care with a psychiatrist or psychologist that specializes in eating disorders. Well, let's talk about some of the symptoms that parents and, and friends and family should be on the lookout for, particularly with teenagers, you say. Dramatic weight loss is obvious maybe them exercising excessively but if you start to notice that they're hiding food and diet pills that would seem to me to be a big red flag it really is and then getting up from the dinner table to go to the bathroom frequently is a, is a sign but other signs that you can look for is when the cheeks become very large as they're becoming thinner because that's one of the problems with bulimia or throwing up your parotid glands which are on your cheeks actually will grow mm -hmm. and so you have a very round face and that's a telltale sign also dentists will see it because people that have bulimia start losing the enamel on their teeth from continually vomiting or, th or throwing up. And, and the so acid kind of eats away at it, is that correct? Absolutely, Kathleen. And so the dentist may be one of the first people to actually see the problem. And bruised or calloused, n calloused knuckles, I would assume, is also from... And that's from putting your knuckles or fingers in your mouth and, you know, the gag reflex can push them up and they can get bruised as well. Can people, I know you said therapy, but can people really be cured or is they, this a lifetime battle? Oh no, they really can. Yes, like any addiction, and this is an addiction, it's a lifelong battle, but you know, so many people that we know in movie stars, it's like, you know, Paula Abdul, Jane Fonda, Russell Brand, Demi Lovato, Lady Gaga, Elton John, you know, there's Princess Di. So mm -hmm. many people have had this problem and they've kept it under control and they've cured themselves of the problem. So with many psychological illnesses, recognizing the problem first is very important, getting appropriate treatment, and you really can get rid of this problem and live a normal life. Well, that's encouraging to say the least, considering the numbers are on the rise. Dr. G, always great to have you. Good to see you, Thank too. you so much. Important topic, and we'll send it over to Walter. All right, thanks.